presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Frank Lovejoy. Me what his first name is. Don't ask me where he comes from. Don't ask me what he does. He's, well, he's just McGraw. Some say he did a little time once. Some say no. There's larceny in McGraw. But if you interest him in an angle, look out for his ethics. McGraw's interest, in the ring, that is, was a pretty boy Mendero, who was finishing off the final touches at McHenry's gym in Midtown for his bout with the leading contender. Pretty boy appealed to the girls, and the feeling was mutual. Pretty boy was uh, quite an investment. McGraw was called in to protect the investment. Me? Uh, I'm Sandra Starr. Justin innocent bystander. You McGraw? I'm Vic Kelsey. I got your message. What do you think of the pretty boy? He's very fancy. A real contender. Oh, please. Well, he's ranked number three, isn't he? 40 wins, 30 KOs. And look at the dolls. They're dizzy about him. Yeah. But can he fight? Hey, pretty boy. Go a little. <laughs> How do you like that? Even with a headgear, he'll feel it for a month. Very impressive. What's the matter? Are you anti-boxing? I'm lukewarm at best. You know you're looking at the next Wilder champ? Okay, I'll buy it. What's the problem? Dolls. Pretty boy doesn't care about anything in this world except dolls. Not money, not, not anything. anything. Just bright lights, dancing, and dolls. Even my doll. Come on, let's talk in the office. Say, Vic. Uh, this is Max Zachary McGraw. Max? Hey. He's Pretty Boy's manager. Well, I thought... On the record, he's the kid's manager. Say, Vic. I think Pretty Boy's working too hard. I think he should... Don't bore me with details. Just tell me he's ready. Oh, he's ready, all right. <laughs> he better be. Okay, beat it. Here's yours. No. What do you mean, no? What's the matter? Didn't you ever hear the word before? Yeah, I heard it, but I don't like it. I don't know what it is you want me to do. Whatever it is, I want twice that amount. Okay, but I haven't got it on me. I'll give it to you later. Now, like I told you, pretty boy is girl happy. He vibrates if there's even one in the neighborhood. But he can't goof up between here and Friday night. He's trained down mean, and I want him to stay that way. I stay with him every minute until he climbs into the ring, right? In bed by 10 and keep him out of nightclubs. Sounds simple. <laughs> you don't know pretty boy. He wants a doll bad enough. He's liable to slug his way out. It's charming. How do I start? You already have. Come on. All right, all right. No girls allowed in the dressing room. Come on, girls, break it up. Oh, 
your bodyguard. Who needs him? And how do you do? Take off. See you around, McGraw. I wouldn't be surprised. Who needs that creep to watch over me? You need what I say you need. You louse up this bout and I'll have a couple of my boys catch you in the alley and break both your arms. You don't frighten me, Vic. Pretty boy, I might as well make the best of it. I don't like me being around any more than you do. Okay. Okay, we'll make the best of it. I gotta take a shower. He thinks he's gonna make a deal with you. I know. Is he? No. I take your money, I play your rules. That's what I heard about you. You heard good. Oh, meet Sam Grogan. He's promoting the match. This the fella? He don't look so tough. They tell me he's tough enough. You gotta deliver pretty boy, understand? He'll be there. We expect a quarter of a million dollar gate. He don't want to lose any money, I know. Now, who gets into pretty boy's room? Well, let's see. I'll tell him, Grogan. You just sell tickets. Anything you say, Vic. No one gets in except me and Grogan. And Max. Oh, yeah, Max Zachary. Me, Grogan, and Max. Okay. That's uh, quite a parley. And Darrow, why don't you sit down and relax? We're 20 stories high, there's no fire escape. I've locked the door and I've swallowed the key. Why don't you sit down and read? Read? I'm sorry. Play checkers? Oh, that's kid stuff. Play chess? What's that? Just some more kids down. And Darrow, this is your big chance. Don't you understand that? This is your chance to be somebody and to achieve something. Like what? Like what? Like fame, like glory. You're a fighter, certainly you must want to be champion. You're only one step away from it. Okay, McGraw, I get the pitch. How much is Kelsey paying you? You don't get the pitch at all. And it's none of your business. I just wanted to know. Okay, if you really want to know. I get a couple of thousand. Half I've got, half I'm going to get. Well, we're in business, man. You collect a couple of thousand from Vic, plus a couple of hundred more from me. Come on. Look, buddy, I don't play it this way. Now, why don't you just sit down and relax? Oh, now, come on, McGraw. We got the whole night before us. Look, let me call up a couple of girls and do the town, huh? I might even be able to get one for you. Uh, are girls the only thing in the world mean anything to you? Yeah. Yeah. What else is there? Well, uh, for one thing, there's uh, money. Can't dance with money, man. How come you never got married? I tried that. She didn't want me to see anybody but her. Oh, real demanding type, huh? Yeah, yeah. She wanted me to spend all of my time with her. Now, can you imagine that? She even got sore if I tried to date another girl. Guy can't put up with that for long. The door is locked. You're locked in for the night. Might as well sit down. Have you got a gun or something? Is that how you're going to keep me in here? No, I haven't got a gun. No gun? Uh-uh. Well, this is going to be pretty simple at that. I'm going to walk right out of here. Or else. Or else what? Else I'm going to whack you to sleep, That's man. That's not. Why not? Ooh, ooh. He doesn't like it downstairs. Who does? You know something, Mandaro? You got a glass belly. I didn't expect it. How much you weigh? 168. 
Will you outweigh me? We're not even in the same division. Okay, then let's not fight. Maybe you'd like a soda or something. Shall I call a bellboy? Always a bellboy. How come they never have any bell girls? Part of the conspiracy. Hello? Where are you, pretty boy? I'm all dressed and waiting to go out. It's going to be kind of a long wait. Say, who is this? This is the keeper of your flame, old McGraw. Oh. Well, uh, can't pretty boy come out and play? Oh, pretty boy's going Betty by. Is Sandra going to be all by her lonesome? Uh, my guess would be no. Who is it, McGraw? Can I dare? Don't hang up, please. What is it? Who is it, Sandra? Yeah. I'm out. I'm gonna get out of here. Bye, dear. Well, I gotta try it once more. Let's not. Let's. How you ever won 40 fights in a row, I'll never know. I want to sleep on the couch. See you in the morning. If that's a dame, go away. Cost me a dollar a pill to sleep like that. You got a bad conscience, Max. And a bad ulcer. Is pretty boy up yet? Ah, oh, he's asleep in his room. He never busted out, huh? Kelsey picked a pretty good man. Well, he's got a pretty good gold mine to protect. Kelsey's gold mine. <laughs> I could laugh. Oh? Could be you don't like Kelsey? How gently put. A respectable man hasn't got a chance. It's the law of the gun. They stalk you like you're in a jungle. Uh-huh. It was you and Pretty Boy until Kelsey's shoulder out, huh? Everything was going along fine. Pretty Boy I found in a sewer. I fed him, clothed him, and taught him how to fight. Next thing I know, I got only 10%. And Mandero belongs to somebody else. Ooh. Forget I said anything. Give me room service, please. You'll forget I said anything, huh? You won't tell Kelsey. What's the matter? You afraid you might get yourself a little bit killed? In a twinkle. Boom. Goodbye, Max Zachary. Yeah, that's right, operator. Room service. You wake him or I wake him? Now, go ahead. You do it. Room service, this is 2014. Will you send up a couple of pots of coffee? Hey, pretty boy. Hey, pretty boy. Hey, McGraw. What? Pretty boy's gone. Gone? He walked down this ledge and used the stairwell window. Looks like a human fly. He can't resist the call of a spider. A dame, huh? A dame, huh, is right, and a dame, huh, goes by the name of Sandra. Hey, if Kelsey finds him with Sandra, it's murder. Murder! Why do you think I'm on my way? Where does this girl live? Beckman Heights duplex, the Santa Clara Arms. I'll go with you. Now you stay here and take care of that waiter. I don't want all that coffee to go to waste. My dreams are getting better all the time. Good morning. Just like that, huh? No explanations, no nothing. I picked your luck. So you picked my luck. Lucky me. Where's pretty boy? You picked the wrong luck. You haven't seen him? Search the closets if you want. I'll take your word for it. You uh, seem at home anywhere. I'm worried about pretty boy. Who cares about pretty boy? You cared enough to call him up last night. That was last night. 
I woke up with a whole new set of ideas. Mm -hmm. I know you're stuck on that, kid. I'm frank to say fighters get me. Athletic heart, that's your problem. Even though you're Vic Kelsey's girl? Even though. What would you do if you found out? Well, I'll recover. I got hospitalization. Hmm. You seem to worry very much, do you? I never try to worry. Are you uh, going or staying? What would I stay for? Breakfast. Jose McGraw. You ever been a fighter? Just the amateurs. Oh, well, that doesn't make any difference. Good girl. Fine bodyguard you turned out to be. Where's pretty boy? He was due at 9 o'clock this morning for a medical. What? A medical examination with Doc Brandoff. It's required by law a few days before the fight. I thought it was a day before. That's just for the newspapers. All right, so it's been postponed today. Postponed? You realize I have a quarter of a million dollars riding on this gate? Tickets, rentals, advertising, payrolls, everything goes off like clockwork. And if he doesn't show up to meet the medical requirements, the whole thing goes down the drain. Now you rush right out of here and get Mendero down to my office. Do you hear? Barely. Fine bodyguard you turned out to be. Where's pretty boy? He just said that. Do you know how much we got invested? To the penny. There's nothing the matter with Mandero. He's out holding hands someplace. All this time? Well, you can't tell about some guys. I'll get it. Hello? What? Who? Max Zachary isn't here. This is Vic Kelsey. Tell me. Yeah, I heard what you said, but I just can't. McGraw, take this call. I don't believe what I heard. I don't want to believe it. Something about Pretty Boy? Some joker's on that phone trying to say that Pretty Boy Mandero is dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? What are you talking about? Shh. Where? Thank you. They found him about 8 o'clock this morning. He was killed by a hit-and-run driver on Palmer Avenue. Killed? I'm out of fortune. You're out of fortune. What about me? I'm out of a couple of fortunes. One that I won't get back and one that I already put out. A few kind words will now be said for the deceased. Either one of you feel up to having a last look at this kid, somebody's got to identify him. Not me. I'm no good at that sort of thing. I'll do it. We don't need you anymore. It's probably all your fault that it happened. If you'd have listened to me and watched them close, like I said, maybe it... Uh, what's the use? Pay them off, Vic. What do you mean, pay them off? Send good money after bad? There ain't gonna be any fight. Well, then I'll pay them off. I don't like any loose ends left laying around. Here. We'll send somebody. Get out. Death was instantaneous, Mr. McGraw. No clues to the hit and run driver? None as far as I know, but then that's not my department. Evidently, there were no early morning witnesses to the accident. Yeah, that is, if it was an accident. You don't think it was? But death with a motor vehicle, sure. Doc, I know there are slicker methods, but a gun, a knife, and a club are pretty conspicuous instruments if you want to make something look like an accident. Well, then that's why you called me and requested an autopsy. Yeah, he had uh, greedy friends. There was nothing unusual at all. It's a bit baffling. There were fatal injuries sustained in the accident. But beyond that, I would say that Mandero was not a well man. Pretty boy Mandero was a trained athlete. He was in superb physical condition. Outwardly, yes. But I found cardiovascular damage. You mean that condition is independent of the injuries that killed him? Punishment in the ring, perhaps? Mm, could be. I'd even hazard a guess that while Mandero was alive, he was subject to blackouts and fainting spells. Well, you did a pretty thorough autopsy. Things were a little slow around here this morning. I like to keep my hand in. 
Thank you, Doc. Pretty boy Mandero's heart condition might never have become public information. He might have been buried and nobody would have been the wiser. I don't get your drift, Mr. McGraw. I'm not too sure I do either. I got a lot of questions, need some more answers. Thanks very much, Doc. You know, come to think of it, there were a couple of times when I thought there was something real wrong with Pretty Boy. Would he have blackouts? Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, how far would you go? Well, we'd be smooching, you know, kissing. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, he, he'd get dizzy. What's wrong with that? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, he'd really spin around like someone was rocking the floor underneath him. Then he'd take a pill. Pill? What kind of a pill? Oh, I don't know. Uh, he had a little silver box he carried with him. You told anybody else about this? Are you kidding? Thanks, Anna. Now, I want some answers from you when I'm leveling. I ask. This kid's death is a loss to you. You had 10% of a contender, maybe a champion. The 10% I won't miss. Pretty boy, I will. He was my friend. We stood side by side. We came up the hard way. I know you can't profit by this kid's murder. Pretty boys. Did you say murder? That's what I said. A hit and run driver on purpose. Now, what about Vic Kelsey? You out of your mind or something? Sure, Vic's tough, but he wouldn't bump him off on the eve of the big fight. Is there any conceivable way that Kelsey could turn this loss into a profit? How? It's all over, period. What about Grogan? Grogan? <laughs> this is the biggest thing he's ever had. It's a sellout. Even if you were a relative, you couldn't buy a ticket. Nobody's guilty, but somebody's dead. Thanks, Max. Sorry about the kid. What's all this loose talk about Pretty Boy being murdered? And why did you set the cops to having our cars impounded? Because one of those cars deliberately ran Pretty Boy down. Cops are going to be here in a couple of minutes. Anybody want to run? We'll sue you for this. I'll do better than that. I'm telling you to get off it, McGraw. And that's an order. Backed up by what? A gun. I see. In other words, you don't want me to prove the pretty boy was murdered, is that it? Because I got a hunch you're the one that figured it out, Kelsey. I'm warning you, McGraw. He doesn't warn. All right. You had the cars impounded. Which car ran pretty boy down? It was yours, Sandra. But there was a catch to it. Somebody else's fingerprints were all over the steering wheel. Somebody borrowed your car, deliberately ran over Mendero, and then put it back. No, no. Him. You're crazy. You're out of your mind. I'm a loser, a big loser like everybody else. That's the way you wanted it to look. But the return of the advance and the advertising and the rent and everything else is only a drop in the bucket compared to the insurance you're going to get because this fight went bluey. So? If the news about his bum heart had gotten out, your policy wasn't worth a nickel. So you bumped him off the day of the examination because that policy was predicated on Pretty Boy being in A1 condition. What'll we do? You don't have to do anything. Police have got a whole schedule worked out for you. You can take this. I don't need that kind of money. Well, there goes McGraw. He was just around long enough to do a job. Wasn't the job he'd been hired for. He never did deliver Pretty Boy. And he could have made himself quite a packet by forgetting the whole thing. You take a chance when you hire McGraw. He has a mean streak of honesty in him. 